Six Strategies to Crush Debt and Live the Life You Want You've clicked on this video, which means you're probably feeling the weight of debt on your shoulders. Well, you're not alone. The average American carries about $38,000 in personal debt, excluding mortgages. That's a heavy load to hear, isn't it? But what if we told you that it doesn't have to be this way? What if there's a way out of this debt trap? A way to crush your debt and start living the life you want. That's exactly what we're talking about today. There's this glitch or myth you can say that once you're in debt, you're stuck there forever. This is simply stupid. Yes, getting out of debt can be pretty hard and it requires discipline and a solid plan, but it's definitely not impossible. According to a survey, 39% of Americans managed to reduce their debt during 2020, a year known for its financial challenges and a lot of trauma. Another myth is that you need to carry a balance on your credit cards to build a good credit score. This is actually a dangerous myth that can lead to unnecessary interest charges. The truth is, you can build a good credit score by simply paying off your balance in full each month. Your credit score is based on a number of factors, including your payment history and your credit utilization ratio, which is the amount of credit you're using compared to the amount of credit you have available. So yeah, keeping your balances low and making payments on time can help you maintain a healthy credit score. Today, one of the biggest sources of debt for many people is, of course, student loan nightmare. Did you know the average student loan debt for class of 2023 graduates was $37,584? and the total student loan debt in the U.S. has reached a staggering $1.7 trillion. I mean, that's a lot of zeros, man. So how do we take control? How to crush these debts and start living the life we want? Let's start with our first strategy, budgeting and expense tracking. I know, I know, just hearing the word budget can make some of us cringe. But trust me, it's not as scary as it sounds. It's proven to be one of the most effective tools for managing your money. The first step is to figure out how much money you have coming in each month. This includes your salary, any side income, and any other sources of income you might have. Next, you need to figure out where your money is going. This is where expense tracking comes in. For a month or so, keep track of every single penny you spend. Yes, even that 150 coffee you grab on your way to work. You might be surprised at where your money is actually going. So, once you have a clear picture of your income and expenses, you can start to create your budget. Start by covering your basic needs first. You know, things like rent or mortgage utilities, groceries, and minimum debt payments. Then you can allocate money for your wants, like entertainment and dining out sometimes. And please do not forget to include savings in your budget. Let's move to our second strategy, the debt snowball method. Wait, what does a snowball have to do with debt? Well, in this strategy, you pay off your debts in order from smallest to largest, regardless of the interest rate. It's called the snowball method because, much like a snowball rolling down a hill, you start small and gain momentum as you go along. Let's say Mike has four debts, a $500 credit balance, a $2,000 car loan, a $3,000 personal loan, and a $10,000 student loan. Using the debt snowball method, Mike would start by paying off his $500 credit card balance first, then move on to the $2,000 car loan, and so on. By the time he gets to his $10,000 student loan, he'll have freed up the money from the other three debts, allowing him to put a good amount towards his student loan each month. Hey. Why pay off the smallest debt first? 
Wouldn't it make more sense to pay off the debt with the highest interest rate? That's a great point. From a mathematical standpoint, yes, it would make more sense to pay off the debt with the highest interest rate first. This is actually the third strategy known as the debt avalanche method. Let's take an example for this too. Say you have two debts, a 5,000 credit card balance with a 20% interest rate and a $10,000 student loan with a 5% interest rate. Even though the student loan is larger, the credit card debt is actually costing you more in the long run because of the higher interest rate. So by paying off your high interest debts first, you're essentially stopping the bleeding. You're preventing your debt from growing exponentially and making it easier to pay off in the long run. Now, this doesn't mean you should ignore your other debts. You should still make minimum payments on all your debts to avoid late fees and credit score damage. But any extra money you have after covering your basic needs and savings should go towards your highest interest debt. Next up, the fourth strategy is creating an emergency fund. Wait a minute, I'm trying to pay off debt here. Why are we talking about saving money? Well, an emergency fund can cover the financial surprises life throws your way, like an unexpected medical bill, car repair, or an even a sudden loss of income. Without an emergency fund, these unexpected expenses can force you into taking on more debt, which will only add to your financial stress. Let's take an example of Lisa. She's a single mom with two kids. She earns $3,000 a month, and her basic living expenses amount to $2,500 a month. Following the rule of thumb, Lisa should aim for an emergency fund of $7,500 to $15,000. But that's a lot of money and Lisa is also trying to pay off her debt. So she starts small. She sets a goal to save $1,000 in her emergency fund. She does this by cutting back on non-essential expenses and putting any extra money she has into her emergency fund. Within a few months, Lisa has her $1,000 emergency fund. Now, when her car breaks down and needs a $500 repair, Lisa can cover the cost from her emergency fund without needing to use her credit card and increase her debt. Let's move on to our fifth strategy, increasing income. This might seem like a no brainer. More money equals less debt, right? But it's not always as simple as asking your boss for a raise. You can try taking on some side jobs. According to a survey, by bank rate, nearly half of U.S. workers have a side gig, and they earn an average of $1,122 per month from their side jobs. That's a huge amount of money that could be put towards paying off your debt. If you're good at graphic design, you could take on freelance projects. If you love dogs, you could start a dog walking service. Websites like Upwork, Fiverr, and Rover can be great places to start looking for side jobs. Another method is by creating passive income streams. One popular form of passive income is investing in dividend paying stocks. According to a report, dividends have contributed to approximately 40% of the stock market's total return since 1930. The third method is by selling unwanted items. Take a look around your house. Chances are there are things you don't use or need anymore that someone else would be willing to pay for. Selling these items can be a quick way to make some extra cash. Websites like eBay, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace make it easy to reach potential buyers. All right, let's move on to our sixth strategy using balance transfers. This is a bit of a more advanced strategy, and it's not for everyone, but when used correctly, it can save you a lot of money and interest. A balance transfer involves moving your debt from a credit card with a high interest rate 
to one with a lower interest rate. Many credit card companies offer balance transfer promotions with low or even zero interest rates for a certain period of time, often 12 to 18 months. However, wait, keep in mind, these low or zero interest rates are usually promotional rates, which means they're only temporary. Once the promotional period ends, the interest rate will go up, sometimes significantly. So it's crucial to have a plan to pay off the balance before the promotional period ends. Second, most credit card companies charge a balance transfer fee, which is usually around 3% to 5% of the transferred amount. So you'll need to do the math to make sure the amount you'll save in interest will be more than the balance transfer fee. Let's say you have a $5,000 balance on a credit card with a 20% interest rate. You get an offer to transfer that balance to a new card with a zero interest rate for 12 months. With a 3% balance transfer fee, that means you'll pay a $150 fee to transfer the balance. But over 12 months, you would have paid $1,000 in interest on the old card. So you're still saving $850. Phew, that was helpful. So which of these strategies are you excited to try? Do you have any other debt crushing tips to share? Drop your comments below. Before you go, don't forget to check out our recent video on nine tax saving strategies for small business owners and entrepreneurs. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching.